It's January and I'm in Adelaide, South Australia for the Tour Down Under, which is seen as the season opening race for the men's and women's World Tour teams. Now I'm down here at the main event and race expo area to check out all the latest and greatest hot tech. So put some shrimps on the barbie, grab a cold can of Coopers, sit down, enjoy the ride. See you in a bit, let's go find that tech. Well, I've been making my way around the bike expo area, which is open to the public. I've also been chatting to all of the pro team mechanics and seeing what's new for the World Tour riders in 2024. Now I'm going to be making a separate video covering the setups of all the teams. So if you want to see that, subscribe to GCN Tech. However, this year it sees Campagnolo leaving the World Tour and we pretty much have Shimano dominating things with just a handful of teams using SRAM group sets. Big gears are pretty much the norm here too, not just 54 or 56 tooth chain rings that many riders are using, but bigger cassettes as well. We're regularly seeing 33 and 34 cassettes used, even on flatter, faster races, and that is in part thanks to the use of 12-speed group sets. Okay, right, first bit of hot tech that I've spotted. It's actually on the Shimano stand, but the main draw here is this Prova. So it's a bike made from a company out here in Australia, in Melbourne to be precise. Now they're using a combination of different materials here. We've got carbon fiber and titanium. The titanium used, well, we've got it in tube form, 3D printed form, and then it's machined as well. So up here at the head tube, we've got a section at the top, which is 3D printed. This main section is machined, and then the tubes are your standard drawn tubes, which are then welded in place. And then if we look at the seat tube, well, we've actually got carbon fiber used here, as well as also at the back of the bike, some really nice looking rear dropouts. Now I believe these are 3D printed as well. Now the joins and the integration of all of these different materials and processes is pretty much seamless on this. The mirror polishing is incredible. The anodizing is incredible. And then up front, we've actually got the NV integrated system here. So we've got the fork, the top cap, and the NV handlebar and stem one piece combination. This is all made out of carbon fiber. Now, I know we're at the Shimano stand, so we can't go without mentioning the wheels. These are the Shimano's Dura-Ace C36s. But I've got to be totally honest, I just wish they were the slightly deeper C50s, because I think this bike will look even cooler. Right, let's go find more hot tech. So, I've got some Pirelli P0s on my bike. However, I don't think I've quite got the clearance for this bad boy. Never mind. Okay, unreleased bike alert here. I'm at the Factor stand. This is the unreleased Factor Ostro Van. We've got two special team colorways here. This is the human, human powered health women's team bike here and the Israel Premier Tech team over to my right there. Now, big revisions to this bike. Factor are saying upwards of 10 watts of saving at high speeds from their testing. So the changes that they've made are up at the front of the bike. The head tube is now narrower and deeper. There's revisions to the fork as well, which match that shape. And then we move to the rear of the bike. The seat tube has an additional cutout now, which is far more pronounced, sort of bringing the back wheel of the bike in slightly. However, fact to say, the geometry remains unchanged. Then up at the seat tube, we've now got a narrower and sleeker design. So the internal battery, if you're running Shimano electronic gears, has now moved from inside the seat post down to near the bottom bracket area, which means there's a little bit more air up there and moves some of the mass of the bike lower down, which is said to improve handling. Also, um, the wheels are new black ink versions, revisions to the rim, revisions to the hub, and they're said to be 300 grams lighter than the previous version, which again is a significant saving. I mean, could this be the time for Froomey's comeback on this bike? Who knows? Right, let's find more stuff. So I've been drawn back to the Shimano stand because they've actually filled their stand up with a whole load of Australian brands with different bikes here. This one is a Simpatico. What's kind of drawn me to it is the Cerakote coating on the top of it rather than having it anodized. Now the advantage of the Cerakote finish is it's super resistant to scratches and super lightweight. This coating is only 20 to 50 microns thick. Well, I want to say thick, but it's actually super thin. Now this stand is full up with really cool brands. We've got titanium, we've got steel bikes, everything is looking super super slick and um, well kid out with the latest Shimano wheels. Right, let's find what other stuff we can see. Let's try win some free stuff on the Oakley stand, come on. Right at the back, we want that. Well, that couldn't have gone any worse, could it? Check out this absolute rocket ship of a bike. It's the giant Propel from newly crowned Australian road race champion, 
Luke Platt. Clearly someone who's got their bike position and setup absolutely dialed in. A couple of cool bits about this bike. Well, the wheels are the first thing that stand out to me. Not crazy deep, but they have got these super wide, super thin carbon fiber spokes, 50 millimeters deep. We've got Corsa Pro tires, 28 mil wide, but also super long and narrow setup on the front. These handlebars, I reckon, are 36 centimeters wide, stem 140 millimeters long. And if you look down the center of the bike, you've got that absolute massive chain ring. Now, most of the pro riders this year are pretty much as a standard run in a 54 tooth outer chain ring. This bike has got a 56, which is like absolutely mind blowing by modern standards. Most people, uh, weekend riders using a 50, 34. This is a 44, 56 paired up with a um, 11 to 34 tooth cassette, which again, 34 cassette is what most of the pro riders are using this year. Color scheme looks fantastic. I love it and it's absolutely rapid. Hopefully um, the team will hook Luke Clap up with a um, Australian road race champion colorway for the rest of the season. That'd be pretty cool. Check this out. It's a bike which I think lots of people are going to be excited to see raced in the World Tour. It's the Van Rysel RCR. Essentially, it's Decathlon's in-house brand. The bike that's being used by Decathlon AG2R Le Monde Alti. Now, I think it's looking really cool and I'm going to throw it out there as the bike of the people but the World Tour edition. Um, it's got that kind of modern, lightweight aero silhouette to it. Really cool bits and bobs built up with Shimano Durace because pro riders are using it. Wheels are by Swiss side, really cool. 28 millimeter wide tires, super wide rims, and a one piece handlebar, which is a kind of collaboration between Dada and Van Rysel. It's got a nice little cut out shape on the top. Overall, I'm liking the look of this bike. Weight wise, it's coming in at 7.5 kilograms, so kind of about the norm for modern disc brake electronic shifting bikes. And, um, well, I just think it's really cool to see bikes which are perhaps slightly more towards the affordable end of the scale being raced by pro riders. Love it. While the Total Direct Energies team aren't out here at the Tour Down Under racing, I have managed to get hold of the MV Melee bike, which is, this bike is pretty much in exactly the same spec that the team's gonna be using. So we've got the MV Melee frame. This is a different color to the team edition. MV wheels, MV tires, MV handlebars, MV fork. It's pretty much the whole MV getup. This is looking super cool. Kitted out with Shimano Dura-Ace. And I think it's gonna be interesting to see how the team get on on this massive change of all of their equipment for the 2024 season. Okay, it's thirsty work all this hot tech. But we're at the pillar stand. This is their triple magnesium designed to improve muscle recovery, improve deep sleep, and reduce the number of cramps that you get overnight from all this uh, hard work and searching out hot tech and cycling I'm doing out here in Tour Down Under. Right, carry on. The UCI are not going to be happy about this. No way is that allowed. You're going to need your sunnies on if you plan on wearing a set of shoes like this. So these are from Ecoy absolutely wild looking chrome mirror finish on the top. It's a little bit too much for me. I think if you're gonna have a pair of shoes like this, you gotta have some serious form, haven't you? And some dark shades on. So, Villa Falanti SLR, the bike of Astana Kazakhstan team. A bike which in my eyes is winning the award, which is unofficial, for best paint job of 2024. Pretty much the same as what it was last year, although, Truth be told, this paint job is actually going to be different every single time due to the process involved to make this kind of really cool ice effect. Also, update on the wheels that the team are using. They've got Vision so far this year. These are the Metron 60 SLs, having last year struggled to um, decide between Corima or Head. Pretty cool, hey? Also, um, Wax Chain Patrol 2024 edition has not started very well because this chain is absolutely dripping in oil. So hopefully, um, come some of the Grand Tours, they've got that nailed on on the wax front. Also, look at this absolute massive chainring. It's from Mikkei, it's um, 56 tooth, and on the inner chainring, they seem to be using a standard Shimano one. There you go. 
So this is the Conago V4 RS, the bike of Team UAE Emirates. And it's pretty much the same spec and bike that it was that they used through 2023. However, there is one small change. The team are still using NV wheels as they've done so before. However, NV have just released new hubs because they've taken control of hub production. It's called the Inner Drive Hub. It uses straight pull spokes and a new oversized ratchet system. Now, this comes in four different options. You've got a 40 tooth engagement, a 60 tooth engagement, an 80 tooth engagement, and a 100 tooth enga engagement. Now, MV are saying this allows you to fine tune the way that the ratcheting system works and also the noise that you get from it if that's something that you're interested in. Anyway, let's give a little free up sound check, but we'll do it the backwards pedal edition, right. Also, um, I don't know whether that's a 40, a 60, an 80, or a 100. Let's go with a 60, because a 60 is what Envy are going to supply as standard. Um, also, the team is still using the carbon tie disc brake rotors, which is something that I actually quite like the look of, although it does upset me slightly that you have to use the six bolt to center lock converter if you want to use these disc brake rotors. But hey, can't win it every time, can you? Okay, I know I literally just said my favorite paint job of 2024 was the Villa Falante of Astana Kazakhstan team. Look, cancel that. I called it too early, all right? We all make mistakes. It's actually this. It's the um, Cannondale Super 6 VF Education Easy Post. This thing is absolutely incredible. It's taking my top spot now. White, pink, yellow, what more do you want? We've got this like hypno effect on the front. And um, cool thing about these bikes, the paint job is designed by Rob Nicholas, AKA Dr. Bobby, the guy who designed my crit bike. If you haven't seen that, actually, go check the video out. We've got the build over on GCN Tech. This um, is absolutely killing it for me. Also, how cool are the bottles? Can't ask for more than that. Matching bottles, sick bike, job done. Update on Wax Chain Patrol 2024 Tour Down Under Edition. So far, it would appear only Visma Lisa bike are the team which is opting to use wax chains. I don't know if that's because this early on in the season and well, the first race they've got to, it's just a sort of convenience thing for the mechanics. Maybe they haven't flown over with all of their equipment to do the chain wax in. But at the moment, it seems like some teams have gone back to using oil instead of wax. Who knows, hopefully for the Grand Tours, we'll see some wax back in action. Okay then, alrighty, there we go. That is Tour Down Under Hot Tech done and dusted for the 2024 edition. Now, let me know in the comments section down below what thing and bit of tech you found most interesting and, um, well, share it far and wide with your friends so they can see all of the latest bikes. Now, if you want to see all of the bikes which the pro men's teams are riding from the World Tour, well, we'll have a video coming out very shortly. So subscribe to GCN Tech, turn on your notifications so that you don't miss out when that video goes live. Right, I'm out of it. I've got loads more cool things to do in this incredible city of Adelaide in the South of Australia. For now, see you later. Bye.